Manufacturing industries in Queensland can be so diverse. They can go from meat to mechanical to metal and cover absolutely everything in between. And there's a lot of moving plant or moving equipment, anything from using knives to saws to angle grinders. People are used to doing the same thing over and over again, um, but unfortunately it's when they do something outside their normal day-to-day -day task is when incidents or injuries can occur. Injuries in manufacturing industry can be anything from a, a strained lower back from lifting something the wrong way through to a wound injury from a knife to having a, a finger or a toe cut off by a saw to being run over by a piece of mobile plant, a forklift or having your arm caught in an auger. She was good growing up, great daughter. Yeah, she was my pride and joy. Always wanted a baby girl. Had the two boys first, but got me daughter. And of course, Tiff being my baby, she was, she was special. Before my incident, I was like any normal teenage, 18 year old girl. Very popular. Yeah, she was school captain and so she could have been anything. I didn't think I had a chance with her. <laughs> we got together officially four weeks before I had my accident. I didn't even really know if we loved each other that much. You know, it was sort of the first stage. You find out if you love someone or not, and then yeah, this happened. And... Where I worked, I basically peeled potatoes, and then at the end of the day, would clean machines. Nobody had a particular spot on where they cleaned, so it was just wherever you got was where you got. And this day, nobody was cleaning the auger, so I thought, oh, my turn, I guess, I'll go do it. And I was cleaning inside there, and it was turned on. Well, my arms were inside. So it's, I don't know whether somebody's reached over and has hit the wrong button, because they're all on the same switchboard. All I remember is it coming on and thinking, oh no, this ain't good. Her right arm had got caught in by the auger and was starting to drag her into the auger. Because it spins, my arm has spun up inside it. And then I've reacted and stuck my left hand in to try and pull my right arm out. And it got caught as well. And I just see blood and flesh and stuff going down my arms and I remember screaming and somebody coming over and turning the machine off. She was quite high off the ground. They had to have somebody hold me until the fire brigade and stuff turned up. From the witnesses at the time, they said Tiffany was quite calm through the whole thing. I was caught in the machine for 40 minutes. Felt like it, yeah, it was forever. When I got there, Tiffany had just been airlifted out by care flight to Brisbane, to the hospital. The most confronting thing is you've got a young person that's gone to work for the day and is coming home quite potentially without her arm. She was as good as on her deathbed. She was bastard. Tiffany's mother and I are on our 25th wedding anniversary. We are in Bullia, which is about two hours south of Mount Isa. And I got a phone call and it was the surgeon. He said, because she'll be unconscious when they bring her in, you're the next in line. Can I give them permission to cut her arm off? And I said, mate, I don't care what you do, you just keep her alive. We'll be there in the morning. Gut-wrenching. Absolutely gut-wrenching. Just to see your little sister, only 18, tubes all down her throat, everything just to keep her alive. And... Any time you hear your daughter or a family member's had an accident, you know, of course you think the worst. And then when you get a phone call to say you've got to give them permission to cut your daughter's arm off at 18 year old, it's not the best feeling. Dad and Matt both struggled. I could see, you know, they'd come in and, you know, they're wanting to be there to support me and stuff, but I know it was hard for them. That first day we seen her, nearly passed out there and then felt like I was going to throw up and got real lightheaded and had to sit down and just chill out for a bit. And then she woke up and the first question she asked me was, if you're going to go, go now. I said to him, if you're not going to be able to handle me either having one arm or all the scars and stuff, I said, leave now. I said, don't hang around. Don't leave at the end when it gets too hard. I said, it's going to be hard. I said, leave now if you want to go. And he said, it, it broke his heart. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I guess I just, I wanted to know he was in it for the long haul. I just knew it was that girl. I didn't care if she got her arms amputated or it was worse off or if it didn't happen. She was, she was mine and I wasn't letting her go. So. And 
never left. I was in hospital for six weeks. He had two days off. And that was only because my parents made him. He just sat there and done everything for her. If anyone loved anyone, they would do the same thing. I think I had six or seven operations. It was my right arm that I originally got caught and I done my nerves, my tendons. I'd done basically everything. You can see the scar that goes around and that was basically all gone. That was ripped. And so what they've done, they've actually taken the muscle and the flap off the top of my left thigh. And then I've had a shattered elbow, which had bone missing. So they've done a bone graft from my left hip to replace the bone. And I had plates and screws in my elbow and I shattered both wrists. But in my right wrist, I have a plate and screws to hold my wrist together. So on my left-hand side, I done my arteries and some tendons and some nerves. I didn't completely cut those. It was just um, a little bit. So I've got pretty much full function back in my left hand, but it would never be the way it was. Like my fingers are all wonky and stuff, but I don't have any function in my right hand. I can wiggle it and that's it. I still have movement or limited movement in my elbow. Um, so it's basically, they call it a post. When Tiff first came home, there was nothing she could do. Like, I mean, nothing. Matt had to look after me from the day I got out of hospital. I mean, showering, toileting, feeding. It was like having a baby, you know, I mean, it's just full care. If she was right-handed person, now everything's got to be done left-handed. I can't lift a lot of things over my head. Um, because I can only use one hand. Jars she has trouble with, opening jars. Just a simple making a cup of tea or coffee, she struggles. There is things she'll ne probably never be able to do, but that's where Matt will do it. He still cuts up my food now. I still can't hold a knife and a fork to cut my food up. So I do struggle, I do have days. The biggest hit I thought she would have taken was mentally because going from being the way she was to being all scarred up and damaged. Look, she's 18, 19 year old, and look, most girls then are wanting to put makeup on and look pretty, and there she is with scars all over her. And... Well, I can be in the shops anywhere, and I can just have people that will just stop and just watch me as I walk past. I feel like a freak show for just people to just stand there and stare. The way I cope, I think, to describe it best, I have Matt and I have my dad. And now I have Billy. They keep me sane, I think. If I was a single 18-year-old girl when I had my accident, I'd be completely different. But knowing that my scars and the way my arms are and all the scars and stuff on my legs don't bother Matt, I think that makes it easy. I feel for Matt, there's a lot of stuff he hasn't spoken to anybody about. Not even my mates or anyone. But I just sort of kept to myself, but around everyone I was fine, but inside I was just every day I used to have nightmares and wake up and grab her and say, you're right, you're right, and sort of just hold her on that. And... I do think it was preventable. Um, they didn't have things in place that they should have had things in place. I think they should have a safety switch where all machinery is locked down before cleaning. Had the machine have had the guard back on it, Tiffany's arm wouldn't have been able to get into the auger. She'd never been inducted on how to use the machine and all that. Young people are vulnerable in that they're quite often in their first job. They might not have had any previous work experience. They won't have any training or may not have any training in what they're doing. Um, and everything they're doing is new and sometimes they don't understand the risks of what they're actually taking place. Older workers can be just as vulnerable. Older workers can sometimes become complacent with what they're doing. They've done it a thousand times before and they just keep doing the same thing over and over again, uh, regardless that they may be conducting risky behaviour. I just want people to know it can happen to anybody. It doesn't only happen to middle-aged men. Key message would be have a look at what you do, have a look at what you do safely and look at it from your child's perspective. Would you be happy for your son or daughter to do what you're doing? Would you be happy for your son and daughter to do 
um, what you're asking your workers to do. And if the answer is no or you're not sure, you might need to have another look about it and have a bit of a rethink. Have a look at what you're about to do. You can always take a bit of extra time and come home a bit late, not rush the job. family and kids and they're more important. So. Why I wanted a daughter so bad because my ambition in life was to walk my daughter down the aisle and three months ago I got to do it. The most proudest day of my life. Not everyone's as lucky as Tiff, you know. It's only because she's such a fighter and a battler that she survived. She's grown up a hell of a lot. Too quick for her age, I think. You know, she was a teenager. Just out of school and just starting to get a feel for life. She never got to make her own choices. So that was just the path that she was pushed into. She's done so well to get here. And we've got a whole life ahead of us now. Take every day as it comes. We'll be right, we got each other, so nothing else we need. I'm quite content with how things are at the moment. All that I want in the future is for Matt and I and the kids to be happy and have a family and friends around us. I always think like what life would be like, but then I'm happy with my life. Well, most people think, oh, it's going to be too hard, but what we've got. Most people don't have, they don't know they've got it. Like the love we've got for each other is just unreal. You know, I know he's in for the long haul and I'd be lost without him, I think. Bye bye. Ironing board. Mummy doesn't know how to use one, then, does she? <laughs> hey?